Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. So before we dive into today's episode, which is all about breaking down five reasons why buying Beverly Hills has been canceled on Netflix after only two seasons, I'm going to break down why I think the show got the axe and maybe what they could have done differently. Who knows? But before we dive in, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's go. So according to People Magazine, Mauricio Umansky's and slash Kyle Richards, even though he's trying to make it his own show, but it would not be a show for not Kyle, for not The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but buying Beverly Hills has been canceled by Netflix after two seasons. The real estate, or the series centered on Umansky's family-run real estate firm, The Agency. Uh Uh-huh. The show has come to an end at Netflix. The scripted reality series, it literally says the scripted reality series. They're not even trying to pretend anymore that reality TV is real. It says scripted reality series. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Anyway. The series will end after two seasons on the streaming platform. Deadline first reported the news on Friday, August 16th. The show debuted in 2022 and has seen two seasons release in March. It followed Mauricio Umansky's family-run real estate firm, The Agency. The business represents some of the most lavish properties in Beverly Hills, per an official synopsis. Umansky's estranged wife, Kyle Richards, the the daughter Alexia, and Richards' daughter, Farrah, also starred on the show. Okay. Anyway, enough of that. We all know about the show on Netflix. I'm going to break down my my top five reasons why I think it was canceled. Number one, I think that the Kyle and Mauricio drama, which helped to boost ratings for season two, but clearly not enough. But I think the Kyle and Mauricio divorce, cheating, split, separation, allegations, rumors that was the juiciest part of the entire show isn't juicy enough in the context of buying Beverly Hills on Netflix. It's really only juicy in the context of the real housewives of Beverly Hills on Bravo, because I don't think we cared that much watching Kyle and Mauricio talk about it in the context of the agency law firm, just their family which is what buying Beverly Hills is. We don't care. We tuned in to get the tea, but then only to get the tea to see how is this going to translate or be shown on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because we need the girls. You know, we need the Suttons and the Ericas, the Garcelles, the Dorites. You know, we need the girls to chime in, to question Kyle, to do all of the things that I think that they're going to do now in season 14. Um, I think it's going to be Kyle's, not necessarily takedown season, because that's like a mean word to say, but I think it'd be Kyle's accountability season for sure. So the drama about Kyle and Mauricio and the secrecy and the cheating allegations and the divorce around their marriage is only juicy in the context of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, because we need the context of the girls gathering Kyle and seeing all of that. It doesn't particularly land in this world of buying Beverly Hills, if that makes sense. Number two, the daughters, their personality and their energy skews way too young. These women are in their 30s, late 20s. I think the middle one maybe is in like her mid 20s, but their emotional intelligence, their energy, their disposition, is very teenager-like. They act like they are 16, 17, 18 years old. So there's this huge disconnect where you have these women who seem like they are teenagers trying to run, help run a business in a real estate firm and are having like sexy scenes with like different guys and people who work at the firm. It just was very ick. It was very, very ick. It didn't land. We, you know, even though, yes, they were all of age, but like having his daughters flirt with 40 year olds and 50 year olds at the firm with people who worked for him was just really ick. 
very, very ick. It was like the young girls, the older men, and the older men weren't even into it. They were like, this is weird. This is icky. These are my boss's daughters. These women seem very, very young. It just was a disconnect and it was just a big ick. And it was hard to see these girls try to be overly sexual when they seem to act like they're 15 years old. So there was a huge disconnect going on there. Um, number three, the other drama going on with people who were not Mauricio or Kyle or their daughters on the show was minimal to nothing to boring to like you did it, you stopped following me on Instagram. That was a huge storyline for an entire show. Like what? Who cares? I can't even think of any other drama or any other storyline going on that I even remember. I can't remember it. So there was no other juicy storylines. There was no other juicy drama. There was nothing else really going on to keep the show afloat because the other storylines about Mauricio and Kyle and the girls fell flat. We only tuned in to get the tea to take back to Bravo for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But they had nothing else going on other than that. So that's my third reason. Um, my fourth reason is too many lawsuits and fraud cases surrounding the agency. We can see scandals when it comes to fraud and lawsuits can work both ways. Sometimes it can bolster ratings. It can bolster, you know, publicity and people tuning in because they want to know what's going on with the fraud and all of this, that, and the third. We've seen that happen again and again and again and again. I've seen it more so happen with the housewives, less so on other television shows or networks or streaming platforms. Usually it has the opposite effect where lawsuits and fraud means that show is getting canceled or that person's getting canceled or they're getting a drop in ratings because people don't want to support it. It seems like fraud is genuinely supported, usually just with like Bravo and Housewives. Sure, there's other you know, cases, of course. So it kind of cuts both ways when it comes to fraud. But I think that when you have a show that is based around your luxury real estate agency, agency and every other day you're getting sued for fraudulent practices, for, you know, uh, doing your clients dirty, for, you know, stealing $3.5 million in PPP loans, you know, I think that people are kind of going to call BS on this. You're trying to feed us this thing like you're this amazing agency, but yet you are being sued every other day. So I think it's just too much controversy, too much negativity, too much fraudulent lawsuits around the agency for us to want to tune in and support. Because again, not all press is good press, even though that's just saying that's not true. Sometimes it will get you canceled, which clearly it did because the show was canceled. And the fifth reason is I felt that there were two different shows in one. I felt like it was trying to be like a selling sunset. But again, the girls skewed so young that trying to see them in this sexual way just seemed really icky and odd and weird and just bizarre, very like it, just very weird. Um, so I think that if they had more adults in it, like a selling sunset, then sure, you could do some type of selling sunset in there. But then I also think with, you know, the daughters that they do skew really young and and the guys that they were talking to who weren't the old men at the at the firm were really young. That's more of like a like a the hills or a siesta key, you know, shows on like MTV or a show like that's on E News. That or even an MTV, but just making it um, an MTV or it could have even been a Netflix, but making it about the girls and their lives like a Kardashians, you know, like the Stallone sisters, something like that. It was trying to combine two different show ideas into one and it just didn't work, you know, either be the, Kardash the Kardashians or be a selling sunset, but you cannot combine both with the people that we've had. So that's kind of where I land on why the show got canceled. I personally, I am not surprised it was canceled. It was, it was good background music, you know, or background noise. I did watch both seasons, not gonna lie, but I'm not surprised it was canceled.
And I want to know what you guys think about this. Did you watch the show? Are you surprised it's canceled? Or did you want another season? What were your thoughts? And what do you think about everything going on between Kyle and Mauricio? Do you think we'll get more tea, more of the nitty gritty, more truth on the upcoming season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? So with that, you guys, I will talk to you later. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Bye.